I will now call to order the Transportation Policy Workshop of the Regional Transportation Commission. It's 9 a.m. June 16th, 2022. Clerk, could we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Bertrand. Attending. Commissioner Sandy Brown. Here. Commissioner Randy Johnson. Here. Commissioner Alternate Hearst. Here. Commissioner Alternate Hernandez. Commission Alternate Schifrin. Here. Commission Alternate Here. Quinn. Present. Commissioner McPherson. Commissioner Chris, uh, Commissioner Alternate Johnson. Jenny Johnson. No, I, excuse me. Um, oh, that's you. I see you. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner McPherson. All right. Commissioner Kristen Brown. Present. Commissioner Parker. And Commissioner Present. Rockin. Here. You have a quorum, Commissioner Koenig. Thank you. Proceed to item two, additions or deletions to consent and regular agendas. Now, uh, we did have uh, some suggestions by commissioners before the meeting uh, that since public comment is currently listed at, at the end of the meeting that we take public comment uh, as item number three. In respect to our 9.30 a.m. hearing, as well as uh, those in attendance from AMBAG for item 27, I'm going to suggest that we take public comment uh, for 30 minutes up or up until 9.30 and uh, then proceed with item 26 and 27 uh, and then the, the re uh, move back to item three, the consent agenda and the consent agenda uh, and move through the uh, in the regular order there with time for additional public comment at the end of the meeting. Um, is that acceptable to the commissioners? I can make a quick quick comment. I, I think for this meeting, given the way we've advertised, it's the right thing to do. In the future, uh, I hope we could uh, make it clear that the, there's at least generally oral communication at the beginning. At the beginning of the meeting, I'd be fine with it anywhere as long as it's time certain. But at the beginning is the easiest way to do that. But I'm fine with it for this meeting. Thanks for that suggestion, Marlon. Great. Then we will proceed with uh, public comment until 9.30. If you have a comment you'd like to make, please use the raise hand feature and I'll call on you uh, in the order that hands are raised. The, our first public speaker will be Mark Masidi Miller. And um, clerk, do we have a, the timer for, we'll provide two minutes for each speaker. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. My name is, uh, greetings, Chair Koenig, Commissioners and Commissioner Alternates. My name is Mark Masidi Miller, co-chair of the No Way Greenway campaign. I am here today because the people have spoken. Measure D was about three things, replacing the rail and trail plan with the trail only plan, removing the existing railroad tracks using rail banking, and permanently ending all planning for future rail transit. In what can only be described as a landslide defeat, over 70% of Santa Cruz County voters forcefully rejected all of these ideas. Measure D's defeat is a political mandate from our community to reject rail banking and use the rail corridor to provide a truly equitable, reliable, and environmentally sustainable rail and trail facility to connect our community together, our county to adjacent counties, and to all of California. Measure D revealed a deep passion in our community for a future that includes both rail and trail. The people want a transportation system that is greener, more equitable, and more efficient than what we have now. Voters recognize that rail and trail is the best way to deliver on that future. Accordingly, today, we the people call on the entire Regional Transportation Commission and staff to <coughs> pursue rail and trail together immediately end all efforts to rail bank the rail corridor, search for state and federal funding opportunities to fund both passenger rail and trail, prioritize the most equitable, sustainable policy and funding strategies, permanently end efforts to isolate South County from North County. At the end of the day, 
that people want a more equitable and more sustainable transportation system that leaves no one behind. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Masidi Miller. Next up, Mr. Ryan Sarnataro. Okay. So what did the voters say in voting down Measure D? No to traffic on Highway 1. You know from your studies the impact of a train on Highway 1 traffic will be minimal. No to rail banking. You know rail banking is required to protect the county from huge fiscal liability. No to inequality. You know the sales tax required for a train will hurt low-income residents, and a train ride will cost so much more than the bus that ridership will skew to higher-income people. Yes to a trail next to rails. You know this option is too expensive to be completed with Measure D funds, and the result will be a broken trail forcing users onto streets. Yes to a lower carbon footprint. You know the excavation, vegetation removal, and retaining walls required for a trail next to rail has the largest current GHG footprint. Yes to a carbon-free, fast, inexpensive train that solves our transit problems now. You know that's an impossible dream. A train is decades away at a cost beyond what society is likely willing to pay. You know how small the impact on traffic. You have two choices, an interim trail that leaves open the possibility of the train dream, or a less useful, more expensive, environmentally destructive trail next to unused rails. I understand politically some of you are trapped in between the unrealistic expectations of voters fed years of disinformation and physical and fiscal reality. Sometimes responsibility requires courage, and if our better angels can ascend, leadership will be rewarded. Do the right thing. Build the best trail as soon as possible in the least expensive and most environmentally friendly manner. You are not precluding a train. You're simply putting it into its proper context. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sarnataro. Next up, Saladin Sale. Good morning, commissioners and alternates. Saladin Sale, living in the Santa Cruz part of our county. We look out today on a different world than we saw at the time of the last RTC meeting. On May 5, no one knew what the voters wanted with regard to the development of the rail corridor. Did they want to change course, remove and rail bank the tracks to build a different kind of trail? Or did they want to preserve the tracks for future use and complete the trail already underway? Today, while results are not final, we have a clear answer from the voters, a thundering endorsement of trail and rail by a whopping 73 to 27% margin as of last night. Today, I asked those commissioners who said they wanted to wait and see the results of the election to unequivocally state their readiness to proceed with the will of the people. Working together, the RTC can make significant progress in the coming months. Now that the competing vision has been so roundly rejected, approve the business plan, expedite completion of the rail trail from Davenport to Watsonville, stop threatening and start working cooperatively with Roaring Camp to develop realistic cost estimates for necessary repairs that are not Cadillac level excesses and look seriously at their conceptual proposal for expanded rail service. Vigorously apply for all potential grant funding and above all, really move forward. The level of public awareness of the potential for our rail corridor has taken a quantum leap, as has the desire for results, not further delay. Come, commissioners, alternates, please heed the call. Don't stand in the doorway. Don't block up the hall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sale. Next up, Brian Peoples. Uh, hi, this is Brian from Tra uh, Trail Now. Um, you all should have received a letter from me uh, with um, concerning Mr. Hurst's comments to Bloomberg. Um, his comments were 
incorrect in the way of rail banking and it it shows the misinformation being provided um, to the public about rail banking and i'm shocked at that a commissioner would go and publicly make false statements and the staff works hard to show the evidence now concerning measure d uh, what it we feel is the the message from the voters it's it's not trail only it's transit and trail that's the message. It's not rail. Rail will never happen on that coastal corridor. The sea level rising requirements alone will prevent it. The Coastal Commission will never, State of California will never allow for an uh, fixed rail system investment uh, that's deep from the ocean, from the Pacific Ocean. We want to advocate that we want transit and trail. That's really the message from the community. Trail now has always been um, a supporter of transit and trail. We have never been trail only. So we want you to step back, first of all, um, ask Mr. Hurst to apologize for mis providing misinformation. Um, a commissioner should not be doing that. The staff works very hard to provide the public with detailed facts. And he personally communicated um, misinformation to the public. And secondly, rail bank as soon as possible. The corridor has been closed for a decade now. Please open it. We need that corridor open. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peoples. Next up is Mr. Jack Nelson. Yes, good morning, commissioners. I'm Jack Nelson. I'm a retired land use planner and environmental planner. I've served as chair of the local Sierra Club Transportation Committee. I've served as co-chair of the Campaign for Sustainable Transportation, uh, but I'm speaking for myself this morning. I'd like to first endorse the remarks made by Mark Masidi Miller and Salad and Sale about Measure D. Uh, commissioners, what I see here is we uh, have the prospect of two north-south main transportation corridors in the county. One is the greenhouse gas highway, and the other offers potentially uh, the lowest per passenger mile or travel mile greenhouse gas emissions in terms of electric rail, bicycling, and walking. Those are all low energy demand, potentially uh, travel modes, whereas the automobile, whether electric or internal combustion, is the highest energy demand system of transportation. So uh, with Measure D's results, I would suggest you just might have a request from the voters to save our butts on climate and move ahead with the rail corridor business plan and get going, stop delaying. Please serve the future on climate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Next up, Matt Farrell. Good morning, Chair Koenig, commissioners and alternates. Um, Matt Farrell, also co-chair of the No Way Greenway Committee. First of all, I would like to thank all the election workers and volunteers who helped make this election possible and all the work they continue to do in counting ballots. It's uh, an important task for democracy. And uh, there were a lot of people who voted late in the election, so they've been working really hard. Secondly, I'd like to thank the vast number of community organizations who supported No on D. This reflected the broader uh, community support that was shown at the polls. And it was really important, I think, in making it clear that this isn't, ju isn't just a, 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 a limited priority for people. Um, when 
Fort met with commissioners last year. They presented a poll that showed that 74% of voters supported rail and trail. The results today from the election are, you know, 72%. So that poll seems very um, prescient in terms of saying what people in this county want. So please move forward with rail and trail. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Farrell. Next up, Barry Scott. Unmute. Uh, thank you. Thank you, commissioners and Chair uh, Koenig. You know, it. <laughs> This vote is, is is really amazing. I think it needs to be taken as a, an out, outright rejection of Greenway, period. An outright rejection of trail only, period. Um, and it's consistent not just with Fort's well-conducted survey that showed per, uh, support for rail transit in the 70s. Uh, that's consistent also with RTC surveys done in 2014 and 2015 and surveys done by the Transportation Agency of Monterey County uh, a year ago, I think, all of which showed 70% in the neighborhood of 70% support for rail transit. I want to point out something that is often forgotten about the TCAA, the Transit Corridor Alternatives Analysis and the Business Plan. That was the first chance to look at something lighter and more affordable. And when you proceed with uh, looking into uh, lighter, more modern, uh, affordable systems, we're going to find that that rail transit is, is more feasible than we ever thought. So I'm asking the commissioners to pursue funding for rail repairs, pursue funding for rail transit planning, and reject rail banking, which is a, just a, dis, a, a distraction. I'll remind uh, the commissioners of, uh, of Director Preston's letter to the CTAC of March 8th, 2019, the RTC board unanimously affirmed its commitment to leave the railroad infrastructure in place, maintain freight rail service, and institute high capacity public transit service. I'm asking the commissioners to support that, and you have the public support in sticking to that commitment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Next up is Melanie Clark. Good morning, commissioners and staff. Um, I just have a brief comment this morning. Um, on behalf of Roaring Camp Railroads, we'd like to thank the voters of Santa Cruz County for overwhelmingly making the correct choice on Measure D. Um, it's a particular importance to me because this is my family business um, that I've been engaged in my, all, my whole life and Measure D threatened its future. I sincerely hope that the commission and staff take the outcome to heart and make decisions consistent with what the voters want. Roaring Camp has always extended its help to the RTC since its purchase of the corridor, and we look forward to continue to do so as we move forward with rail and trail. Thank you for this opportunity to comment. It's very much appreciated. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Next up, Michael Sain. Uh, thank you, Chair Koenig. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Michael Saint with uh, Campaign for Sustainable Transportation. Uh, I'd like to share with you an uh, article uh, from Street Blogs uh, LA and change the subject a little bit. Uh, the title of this article is Metro Committee Expected to Vote to Not Build Lower 710 Freeway Widening Project. Um, I think that's really exciting news. Uh, basically, Metro and Caltrans are now, instead of touting the pursuit of an equity and environmentally focused multimodal investment strategy, and that's the reason for canceling this widening project. A few of their comments are interesting. They kind of go along with a lot of the things that we're doing presently. Um, Metro and Caltrans are not doing this out of the kindness of its heart. The community caught them trying to get around environmental laws. And then when federal and state agencies essentially declared the project illegal and harmful, local freeway builders reluctantly acknowledged the necessity of restarting their planning progress. Caltrans wishes to move forward with selecting the no build alternative uh, as the locally preferred alternative. alternative. Uh, we believe this determin determination is responsive to current concerns related to property, equity, 
environmental air quality impacts. I think we're going through the same process with our widening of our highway at this time. Uh, the RTC does have the option at a 75% vote to adjust funding. I think that funding should move away from the highway, become more mass transit oriented, specifically the rail and trail, as well as slight widening of the highway for a dedicated bus on shoulder project. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Saint. Next up, Jacob Wysocki. Uh, hi, am I coming through? Yep. Okay. Uh, so as we move past Measure D, uh, one thing I'd like to bring up is a, a reminder of why the Surface Transportation Board allowed the RTC to purchase the line in 2012. Uh, the terms under which the line was purchased is called the State of Maine Precedent, and this allows the separation of the physical assets and the right-of-way. The purpose of the State of Maine Precedent serves uh, has, has basically twofold. Um, one is that it helps state and local communities preserve freight rail service on lines where profitability is marginal. The second is that it promotes the efficient use of existing freight rail corridors for mass rail mass transit without harming common carrier freight rail operations. During the purchase process, the RTC told the Surface Transportation Board that we were purchasing the line with the intention of preserving freight. Now, obviously freight is not gonna generate a lot of money locally. Um, if there were a lot of money being generated by freight, we never would have been able to purchase the line in the first place. Um, also, I understand the repairs to the line are expensive. However, this is the responsibility we have ex uh, assumed in exchange for the right to own this corridor and build a trail. Uh, with the defeat of Measure D, the county general plan uh, contains the uh, objective still, uh, 3.7, preserving the corridor for availability to carry freight. Uh, so while I understand that many uh, commissioners see um, maintaining this line for freight as a burden, uh, I'd like to encourage us to um, come through on our responsibility and do what we told the Surface Transportation Board we were going to do, which is maintain this for freight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wasaki. Next up, Ms. Sally Arnold. Thank you. Measure D was about four things. Do you want to eliminate passenger rail from the general plan? Do you want to rail bank? Do you want to tear up the tracks? Do you want a trail only? The answer to all four of these questions was a resounding no. The Greenway folks can complain about the results, but the fact is they set the terms of this election. They wrote the initiative just the way they wanted. They chose which, uh, whether to do this in a primary or a general election. They decided on their messaging to the voters. This entire election was on their terms and they kept telling you, let the voters decide. Well, the voters have decided. The voters of Santa Cruz County do not want to eliminate passenger planning for passenger rail from our general plan. We do not want to rail bank. We do not want to tear up the tracks and we do not want Greenway's trail only. The election results, about 72, almost 73% so far, are consistent with the polling that was done about 18 months ago. It's consistent with the ratio of communication that you receive every month on this issue. Now we have an expensive, had an expensive election that just confirmed what all the evidence was already pointing to. The vast majority of this community likes the original plan for the Monterey Bay Scenic Sanctuary Trail and future Clean Light Rail. Despite their years of work trying to delay this project by demanding multiple studies and sowing confusion and discontent about the plan, Greenway has not been able to convince the community that we don't want what we want, which is a rail and trail. Now is the time for the commission to listen to the vast majority of your constituents and act on the will of the people. Stop trying to rail bank, build the Monterey Bay Scenic Sanctuary Trail as planned, prepare for future, pas future passenger rail service. You have the chance to lead a really popular project. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Next up, Lonnie Faulkner. Ms. Faulkner. 
Hi, thanks. I was just given the opportunity to unmute. Thank you, dear commissioners. Uh, Equity Transit joins the community in recognizing a clear voting majority opposed to Measure D and the tenants of Measure D, which include rail banking and ripping out the tracks. And uh, the community obviously opposes changing the general plan and settling for trail only. The percentage of voters who in midterm elections, I'm sorry, the percentage of voters who vote in midterm elections is comparatively small. A strategy Greenway assumed would be in their favor. We know the people who took time to vote are those people who are highly committed to understanding what they are voting on and why. While canvassing in the community, I was very impressed with the hundreds of community members I spoke to, the kinds of questions they asked, and their determination to really understand what Measure D meant for our community. I've heard a few proponents of Measure D state that voters simply voted no due to their confusion and lack of information, but this underestimates the intellect, wisdom, and commitment our voting members of the community have for their democratic process. The community was initially confused by Measure D. Many people kept asking, didn't we already vote to support rail in our community years ago? Let's get it done already. Why are we voting on this again? But in the final weeks before the election, it was clear that people were reading up and studying the issues. They mentioned various articles and local papers were confusing. They, they uh, took in all information available, including leadership from the wider circles of our government, uh, made available through the work on the No on D campaign and participating organizations. The landslide opposition to Measure D is a clear sign to our county leadership and elected officials that the majority of this community wants both rail and trail as soon as possible. And we urge the RTC to honor this directive and commit to seeking and applying for funding, prioritizing rail as our next transit project moving away from highway building, which is neither environmentally sound or equitable for meeting our transit needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faulkner. And I think we will have just enough time uh, to hear from the remaining three members of the public with their hand up before we move uh, to our public hearing right around 9.30. Next up is Ms. Robin Belkin. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to comment. I'd just like to point out how rare it is to get 72% of public support for anything so Measure D, I think, is just a resounding comment on what our community wants. And I feel it demonstrates that the community supports moving forward with the rail and the trail, and they outrightly reject Greenway's trail-only plan, their rail banking plan, and frankly, I and others are tired of Greenway's interference with the plan <laughs> that has been in place and that the people clearly want. It seems Greenway has had a special seat at the table that isn't representative of our community, and I don't know why they're there. And I think hopefully it's clear to the RTC that <laughs> they are not representative of what we want. So anyhow, I hope now the RTC will diligently pursue rail repairs, rail transit planning, and reject rail banking. I finally just want to strongly support Sally Arnold's comments just now. They are right on. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Belkin. Next up, Mark Johansson. Yes, uh, can you hear me? We can. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chair Koenig. Now that the residents of Santa Cruz County have given you a strong mandate to proceed with the planning for trail and rail, the next step is to proceed without delay to the next phase of the 2021 transit quarter analysis, which is to prepare a business plan for the locally preferred alternative electrical passenger rail and to seriously look at cost-effective rail alternatives. Not only did the voters resoundingly defeat Measure D, but they expressed a strong desire to implement rail in the near term and not decades from now. The commission should now direct staff to line up the studies necessary to seek all funding available for rail and trail and to move projects forward. Also, it's not surprising to read in the election code section 9111 report on Measure D that the passage of Measure D would have had no effect on housing or the ability of the region to meet its housing needs. And that's because rail has not been incorporated into the housing element and other elements of the county's general and specific plan. 
Also, that analysis um, said that the measure wouldn't have no effect on the ability to compete for affordable housing funds near rail line. The reason is because passenger rail is not currently in operation. So all commissioners should arrange for a trip along the layer of the rail line and see for themselves the opportunity for high density housing along the line in many areas where that would make sense. For those city and county elected leaders who have a serious interest in addressing this region's housing needs, it would be critical that your district's general and specific plans be developed to integrate rail, transportation, and housing planning, and to create incentives for transit-oriented development along the line. We should be seeing how we can make passenger rail a reality and work toward a constructive discussions, including viable alternatives to rail banking, not continuing the path of saying no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johannesson. Our final speaker this morning will be Ms. Judy Gittleton. Hey, thank you, commissioners, for taking my call. I'm Judy Gittleton, and I am a Watsonville resident and a train fiend. And I look forward to you implementing what the voters want, which is a safe trail and rail, a rail and prioritizing. Please complete the repairs that are on your schedule, on your agenda, and reject rail banking fiercely, and then seek all funding. It is available. I hear daily about uh, grants that are available, and I think that the priority is to obtain all available funds for this project post date. And in um, my final few seconds, I'm just going to read you the poem that I wrote to you. Um, it is Dear Regional Transportation Commissioners, in response to our elections, your role is firm action, track by track, trestle by trestle, train by train, trail by trail. Advance us in service, command us in earnest, bring your skills to the forefront, your work is important. Our trains and attraction get funding, that's action. The former governor is listening, your directive is riveting, make our track stable, yes, yes, you are able. Transport us, support us, endear us, delight us. With all your might must you show up and build us. The tracks you're obliged to, because the votes demand of you. Wow and endorse us, the train will reward us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gittleson. We'll now proceed to our regularly scheduled public hearing at 9.30 a.m. It's item 26. I do apologize for any member of the public who, who still wishes to speak. We, you will have another opportunity uh, at the end of our meeting uh, to present uh, or communications for items not on the agenda. So we'll, uh, again, we'll proceed to item 26, public hearing on measure D of 2016, community bridges lift line five-year plan. And for a report on this item, we have Ms. Rachel Morricone, our senior transportation planner with the RTC. Good morning, commissioners and members of the community. Um, as noted, we're now going to switch back in time to the 2016 Measure D, uh, which was approved by two thirds of Santa Cruz County voters. That is a half cent sales tax, which provides critical funding to maintain and expand transit and paratransit services for seniors and people with disabilities maintain and improve our local roads and highways, our rail corridor, bicycle and pedestrian facilities. So before you today is the Measure D five-year program of projects for Community Bridges Lift Line, showing how it plans to use its formula allocation of 4% of Measure D revenues um, from fiscal year 2022-23 through fiscal year 26-27. Um, for paratransit services for seniors and people with limited mobility, as shown in Exhibit A of the resolution. The Measure D ordinance approved by voters requires each agency receiving Measure D revenues to prepare an, an annually hold a public hearing on their planned use of Measure D funds for the next five years. Lift Line serves as the Consolidated Transportation Services Agency for Santa Cruz County and provides trans paratransit services for folks to get to medical appointments, um, meal sites, groceries, um, and other locations. Since Lifline is the only agency receiving a direct allocation of Measure D funds that is not a public agency, the Regional Transportation Commission um, oversees approval of the five-year plan. Lifline's five-year plan includes 
additional drivers, training and outreach and administration to expand its service to the weekends um, and later hours, which was not possible before Measure D went into effect. It also includes funding for its new operations facility in Watsonville and funding to leverage grants to purchase new vehicles, including electric vehicles, as well as the equipment and upgrades to its maintenance and operations facility needed to support those vehicles. These projects address several of the priorities that were identified in the unmet transit needs list that was adopted by this board in, at your May meeting and the Regional Transportation Commission's Elderly and Disabled Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed Listline's proposed use of Measure D funds at its May 2020 meeting and recommends that the RTC approve the five-year plan as proposed by Listline. Staff recommends that you hold a public hearing to give the public an opportunity to provide input on Listline's proposal and then adopt by resolution the Measure D five-year plan as shown in Attachment 1 in Exhibit A. Doug Underhill and Jesus Borges from Community Bridges Listline Paratransit Services are available to answer any questions that you might have on the specific proposals in their plan. And with that, I'll turn it back to you for any questions you might have of staff or Listline staff. Thank you, Ms. Morricone. Are there any questions from members of the, of the commission? Seeing none, I'll officially open the public hearing. Any member of the public wishes to uh, address us on this item, please raise your hand. I see a hand raised by Ms. Margie Fiddick. Please proceed. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to comment on measure D. Is this the appropriate time to do so? Uh, I'm, I'm afraid not. This is um, for comments on the 2016 Measure D and Community Bridges lift line five-year plan. Uh, would you all have another opportunity to comment uh, on the recent election at the end of our meeting? Which um, I will do that. I forgot to lower my hand. My my apologies. All right, no worries. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Brian Peoples. Hi, this is Brian from Trail Now. Thank you. Um, we absolutely support lift line. You know, my mother died of ALS a year ago, and uh, she was a big user of uh, LiftLine. It was a game changer for her. It was interesting. Um, the difficulty was getting her to initiate that use. Uh, once she got comfortable with it, it worked fabulous. Um, it's probably one of the best uh, metro programs we have for our community because it's from the point A of where they're at to point B to the doctors. There's no fixed rail system that could support that. There's no bus system that can support it. LiftLine works really well for that. So um, fully support it. One other note, um, Measure D, 2016 Measure D originally came out with 24% funding for the train. And uh, we came out as a political action committee opposed to Measure D um, because of that. Um, the language in Measure D 2016 was changed prior to the election, uh, shifting the rail to only 8% and, um, and moving those monies to lift line where it belonged. And we're, we are seeing the results of that. And after the language was shifted, Trail now became a supporter. And our supporters gave the most funding for Measure D, uh, 2016 Measure D. And 2016 Measure D has been a game changer for our community. We're able to widen the highway. We're able to invest in our roads. And we have been able to invest in lift line. So thumbs up on lift line. The only suggestion I would get if is more advertising and more outreach. Uh, to bring more customers to it. Uh, we're a big promoter and thank you for the work, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peoples. Last call for members of the public wishing to address us on this item. All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing and return it to the commission for comments and action. I see a hand from uh, Commissioner McPherson. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair Koenig. I, I really think, um, it, on Measure D of 2016, everybody can say it passed because this was included. 
And this is one significant element of Measure D 2016 that allowed it to uh, be approved by a county voters uh, by more than two thirds of county voters. Uh, this is a tremendous part of Measure D uh, 2016. I wanna to continue to say the year. And uh, I think it's a tremendous program, a great uh, presentation by Ms. Marconi. And I would move the recommended actions to approve the five-year program of projects uh, that were listed. Second. I'll second. Oh. Uh, motion by Supervisor or Commissioner McPherson, second by, I believe that was Commissioner Schifrin. All right, and then um, uh, I believe our next comment is Commissioner Rotkin. Yeah, I, I wanted to start, uh, I support the motion that's on the floor. I, I wanted to start by just clarifying to the public after uh, Brian Peoples comment, there may be some confusion. We have two kinds of paratransit service in the, in the uh, county. One of them is the one that we're looking at now, and that's the lift line project that's run by Community Bridges. That's a service that takes up people, not for any kind of ride, but for specific kinds of purposes that include medical visits, um, uh, shopping visits and uh, uh, well, there's another one I'm forgetting what it is but they're, but they're specific ones those rides are free um, as I understand it and um, people who are el income eligible um, and um, otherwise uh, need those kinds of rides can work those out with LiftLine. The Metro Transit System also runs a paratransit service that's open to members of the public with disabilities and have to be certified that you have uh, either elderly or disability, particularly disability situation that requires you to use that service rather than the fixed route buses. Those those rides will take you anywhere for any purpose. You could be visiting a friend or whatever else you like. And we do charge for those rides. We actually charge twice the cost of what it would be to take a, fixed, a ride on a fixed route bus uh, ride. So the public should be aware that what we're looking at this morning is part of the paratransit option that's available to people in this county. But uh, the, I think Brian's comments about Metro service kind of conflated. I'm not sure which his which uh, service his mother used, but but uh, it could be either of those two kinds of services that are out there. I just wanted to try and clarify that, that situation. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rockton. Commissioner Bertrand. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair. Um, yeah, I'd just like to comment as an elected official, I've heard that these two available services are, you know, very important for situations of those who actually need them for a variety of reasons. And so I think many of us are elected and what we hear from the public that it meets a need. We know we spent the money wisely. And when I was on the senior council, I did work to get this expanded funding and I'm glad it did. And um, I'm glad that they're using their money wisely to um, go electric and make sure that their facilities uh, can meet the challenge of keeping their services um, operational. So I think um, this is a wise spending of money. And I think us as elected officials on D and all of our other variety of councils um, are doing our job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Bertrand. All right, we have a motion on the floor uh, by Commissioner McPherson and a second by Commissioner Schifrin uh, to approve the resolution and the Community Bridges Lift Line Measure D five-year program of projects. Is there any further discussion? None. A clerk, roll call vote, please. I just wanted to start off by apologizing to Commissioner Brandy Ryder. I did not include her on the roll call, but she is present. Uh, Commissioner Bertrand? I agree. Commissioner Sandy Brown? Aye. Commissioner uh, Johnson? Aye. Commission Alternate Hearst? Aye. Commissioner Alternate Hernandez? Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Alternate Quinn? Yes. Commissioner Koenig? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Kristen Brown? So I think we may, she may be still here. I think we may have lost Can her. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. There you are, yes. Yes, I vote aye. Thank you. Commissioner Parker? And Commissioner Rockin. Aye. 
That was unanimous. Great, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marconi and the Lift Line team for being available for questions. We'll now proceed to item 27, adoption of the findings, statement of overriding considerations and mitigation monitoring and reporting program as required by CEQA guidelines and adoption of the 2045 Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Plan. For presentation on this item, we have transportation planner, Amy Naranjo. Amy, take it away. Uh, Mr. Ronho, we cannot hear you at the moment, if you are trying to speak. There we go. Sorry, my, uh, my audio was turned off here. Let's get my video on. There we go. All right. And you can see my screen? We can hear you. We can see you. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you and good morning, commissioners and members of the public. My name is Amy Naranjo, and I'm a transportation planner for the RTC. So the RTC has prepared the final 2045 Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Plan. This plan describes the existing transportation system network, forecasts the amount of existing transportation, uh, excuse me, forecasts the amount of funding anticipated for transportation projects, and identifies transportation programs and projects to advance the region's goals over the next 22 years. Projects identified in the 2045 RTP include maintenance of maintenance of and improvements to local roadways, highways, bicycle and pedestrian facilities, transit service, specialized transportation for seniors and people with disabilities, and transportation demand management programs. Throughout the development of the RTP, staff has solicited the input of the RTC, and RTC advisory committees, partner agencies, project sponsors, and members of the public at key milestones during the review and approval of the policy element, the financial element, and the action element, which define the financially constrained project list. Uh, at the March RTC meeting, at the March 3rd meeting, the RTC accepted the final draft of the 2045 RTP. And today's staff, rec staff is recommending adoption of the final 2045 RTP, as well as the EIR findings. So the Association of Monterey Bay Area Governments, or AMBAG, develops the Long Range Transportation Plan, referred to as the, Mon as the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, or MTP, for the Monterey Bay Area Tri-County Region, including Santa Cruz, Monterey, and San Benito Counties. AMBAG combines the Sustainable Community Strategy, or the SCS, along with the MTP. So as required by the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA, both the MTP, SES, and the Santa Cruz County RTP require environmental review. AMBAG is the lead agency for preparation of the EIR and the three regional transportation planning agencies, including the RTC, serve as the responsible agencies under CEQA. Uh, AMBAG certified the final EIR for the 2045 MTP SES yesterday at their June 15th AMBAG Board of Directors meeting. The final EIR includes additional language that addresses public comments received and includes all the responses to the comments that were received as well. The details regarding the potential environmental impacts of the 2045 RTP are available in the findings and statement of overriding con conditions, which are included in your packet as attachment to Exhibit A. This document provides specific reasons why the benefit of a proposed project outweighs the adverse uh, effects, including the discussion of social, economic, and environmental benefits of the project and why alternatives, although feasible from a technical standpoint, are rejected. So today, staff is recommending that the RTC consider the following. Uh, one, consider the, the final environmental impact report for the 2045 RT, uh, RTP. Two, adopt the resolution that adopts the findings, statement of overriding considerations, and the mitigation moder monitoring and reporting program related to the EIR that was certified by AMBAG as the lead agency under CEQA for the 2045 RTP. And then finally, approve a resolution adopting the final 2045 RTP. Uh, and so that concludes my staff report. I'm happy to take your questions. Heather Adamson, AMBAG Planning Director, is also on the call, and as well as George Dix from Rincon Consulting, and they can answer any questions that are related specifically to the EIR. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Mr. Ronho. Other questions from members of the commission? I see uh, recognized Commissioner Rotkin. I just wanted to ask when's the next time we would be updating this plan. Uh, we'll likely start work on uh, the next RTP um, 
probably in the coming months after we're we're done with this RTP. <laughs> so we so we so we advance this uh, every year uh, by one year effectively. Is that we, how that works? We thought, as opposed to every five years, or how often does it actually get reconsidered as a plan, and then right. have a new new EIR done on it? Yeah, the uh, the RTP is done every four years, um, four years, and it's and it's typically a multi year process in the development of this. Uh, so the the work for this RTP started in 2019, and we're finishing today, June 16, 2022. So it takes a considerable amount of time, um, and in the process for the next RTP will likely be a major uh, major update, and so that work will likely start happening. I'm assuming in the next couple of months. Okay. Well, then the comment I have, uh, Commissioner Koenig, is, is that um, there there are some issues raised about the fact that the, this plan doesn't really incorporate any kind of rail stuff into it uh, by a couple of members of the public. Uh, I got emails emails about that. Um, I'm fine approving this plan today. I, I think the next time we'll get to look at the overall pictures. It certainly happened before we're anywhere near rail service. And it was pointed out that the reason that the AMBAG doesn't include uh, the rail issues is because uh, at this point there's no you know, integration in the county plan uh, of the, uh, the impacts of if we do build a rail project what that is, and that might be before 45 it won't be next year it won't be in the next four years but it might be before 45 and the question would be um, that we don't include the say housing opportunities that are opened up by use of a possible rail line and other kinds of things like that since it's not in the county plan or city plans um, in the in their housing elements and so forth, the AMBAG doesn't incorporate those into the question of what kind of transportation systems necessary to serve those uses. So I don't think it, it'd be a, almost premature. In fact, it would be premature at this point to try and speculate about what that might look like when we're so far away from actually getting a real rail program. Even if we're successful with that, um, I'm fine with approving the plan that's in front of us now. But we should be clear in response to these comments from the public and we'll probably get some more now. I hope not a whole lot because it, I, I don't think there's much we can do about it in the short term, but I, I think that uh, we, we need to address those in the next time we look at a major uh, revision of this plan, probably, as it sounds like probably in about four years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Rotkin. Uh, Executive Director Preston, did you want to respond to that? Uh, yeah, I did want to make a comment regarding um, why rail transit was not on the you know the constraint list um, and included in the EIR analysis? Um, we had considerable discussion with Hambag about trying to get it on to the constraint list. Um, uh, to to do so, we would have to um, model uh, local funding um, for that in order to open up the doors to the state and federal funding. So we would have to model about. Um, you know, the equivalent of a half cent sales tax um, in order to, to be able to do so. Um, we could have done that in the last, um, uh, this RTP cycle, but if we did not make progress in passing a sales tax in that period of time, we would then have to remove it for the next cycle, which would be this coming cycle that you're talking about. So if that's something that the commission would like to see done, um, um, it'll be good to, to get that direction so that um, we can include it in, in the next cycle. Thank you, Director Preston. Ms. Heather Adamson, did you wanna to respond to that as well? Yes, I just had a couple comments on the on the land use related comments. Um, like Amy said, uh, AMBAG also will be getting our process to update, um, uh, a bigger update for the next cycle, which will be you know scheduled for adoption in 2026. The first step is to look at our land use um, assumptions and modeling, and that will begin next year in 2023. Um, that will coincide with all the jurisdictions updating their housing elements, which are due in December 2023. So we will have that new uh, land use information related to new housing and where it will be cited. And that information will go into our, our, our next MTP and of course uh, be included in a future EIR. Um, as for the rail, it is, an, as, as um, uh, Executive Director Preston mentioned, it is included on our unconstrained list. Uh, if something were, and, and for reasons that he mentioned, we had, we had a lot of discussion about this. If something were to change in the next couple of years, uh, prior to us releasing um, the draft um, next update of the transportation plan in 2025, uh, we have done a mid-cycle amendment 
um, in the past and and uh, recirculated a supplemental EIR for other projects and other in the other counties. And so that's not unheard of. Um, if something were to you know move really quickly and uh, on the rail project and we needed that before. Of course, that could be evaluated and done mid-cycle, um, but nothing prohibits you from working on, on the rail planning um, in any direction just because it's not identified as a constrained project. It is in the plan. Um, we would just need to do additional work to move it from uh, con unconstrained to a, a constrained, and that would include additional environmental analysis, um, or it can just be done as part of our regular update cycle that will start next year. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Adamson. Mr. McPherson. Yeah, just very briefly, I think transit-oriented housing is exactly where this conversation should go in the future. That's all I need to say. Thanks. Thanks, Bruce. Enough said. All right, thank you, Commissioner McPherson. Any further questions or comments from members of the commission? Seeing none, we'll open it for public comment. Mr. Brian Peoples. Hi, this is uh, Brian Petralio. Thank you, Amy, great report. You know, it's interesting, um, the mitigation plans that you call out, a lot of them are, are reason we, uh, we're we having the mitigation requirements is because we're trying to accommodate a train that will never show up. You know, segment seven, we're destroying heritage trees. You're excavating into the hillside. Um, the North Coast farmland, is being going to be destroyed because you're going to have a trail next to the old tracks. I would ask Mr. Rotkin to, to say, you know, why are we doing that? Why are we destroying farmland when we have a perfect corridor for an old railroad track? Um, look at Harkin Slough. Um, the wetlands are going to be destroyed when you try to have a 60 trains a day and a trail going through there. It's not realistic. So when you have an EIR and you have mitigation plans, you need to follow through with them. You're trying, you're actually imposing uh, more detriment to the community because of the idea that you're going to have a train in the future. And in reality, you won't, you know, the idea that we're going to have a this huge fixed rail system, it feels like you're trying to make us like San Jose or, or San Francisco. Uh, our community doesn't want to grow and become a huge uh, major uh, over barren with population. Um, the idea of having a 60 trains a day flying through Manresa Beach, flying through La Selva, 20 feet from the Pacific Ocean, it's going to be real difficult to get any type of funding for that. You're not going to get the support for 60 trains a day speeding through our community. So let's have a, a plan for transit and trail. Let's have transit on the corridor so that our community can begin using that corridor in a realistic manner. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Pickle. Frank Praxel. Sorry about that. Um, uh, thank you, Chair uh, Koenig and uh, other commissioners. Um, we just want to, I, I want to speak for Fort uh, Friends of Rail Trail uh, to reiterate some of the points that we made in a letter we sent in that uh, really support what Mike Rotkin has said this morning. Um, that we really feel that this needs, this plan needs to be updated now since Measure D has made it clear what the Santa Cruz residents mandate for uh, rail and trail along the rail line. And um, there are a number of places where this e these ERI findings find significant and unavoidable impacts on greenhouse gas reduction and uh, unavoidable delays in daily VMTs. Um, so we would like to recommend that the commission look at the most environmentally superior alternative, alternative three, infill and transit. And this should be looked at further as um, really being the best environmentally friendly uh, approach, which was also mentioned by one of the commissioners. So um, thank you for considering that. Thank you, Ms. Braxel. Next up, uh, Mr. Jack Nelson. Uh, thank you. This is Jack Nelson. 
And I'd first just like to call your commissioner's attention to your correspondence on this item in your item handout, including from Fort and also from Rick Longinati of Campaign for Sustainable Transportation. That one pointing out that with this EIR, vehicle miles traveled per capita will increase. So that alone should be a red flag to your commission that is something is wrong with this RTP. This RTP, if I may use my brief moments to speak truth to power, this RTP is a local suicide pact on climate. This will not address our climate need in the future and future generations will look back and unless you change course, will condemn your actions on this plan. So I think some of you are probably considering this just a procedural formality today to adopt this plan, but I'm here to tell you commissioners, this is wrong. This is a crime against humanity to grow the greenhouse gases emitted from our transportation system in Santa Cruz County. It's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Next up, Robin Belkin. Hi, I'm just uh, weighing in on the last comment. I agree. The bureaucratic foot dragging in this community when we've had this resounding 72% overwhelming support for rail and trail has got to be addressed more quickly. We do need to update the plan now, and it is urgent. I, I just find this so frustrating. I hear comments from staff that if something changes, you can always work on the rail. And um, yes, something has changed. You have overwhelming community support for this. And you can't put it off till 2025 or whenever you're planning on doing that. It needs to start immediately. We have a huge community will right now. Let's do what it takes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Belkin. Next up, Ryan Sarnataro. You heard it from uh, Guy Preston that a train is going to require a sales tax increase. You know that you can't get a sales tax increase through the county when only 6,000 people a day are going to use that train and you have a quarter million people in the county. So this whole idea that you're going to bend your EIR to accommodate something that is politically impossible not to mention the ecological and other impacts of it that, uh, that make a train uh, a poor option for our, you know, not even a realistic option. So I, I just want to point that out and make sure that the commissioners understand that their place in this is to speak truth to ignorance. And that ignorance is being expressed in the community. And when I say ignorance, I don't mean stupidity. I mean, they just don't really understand what the choices are here. They want the beautiful train that flies in the air, but it's not possible. And as soon as we can actually ground to the fact that we do have in that corridor an option to provide at least some level of transportation and possibly a way to orient it so that future transportation options as they emerge from our uh, ever advancing technology will be able to be deployed uh, flexibly. That's where you need to go. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sarnataro. Next up, Mr. Barry Scott. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Koenig. And I wanna thank uh, Commissioner Rotkin for his comments. Uh, about in, infill and uh, the, uh, you know, a transit focus with, with housing infill. And um, the, I, 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 I think the, 
the half cent sales tax assumption is premature. What we haven't done is pursue a business plan that looks at lighter vehicles, uh, a street car option, which is included in our list of options that might be significantly less expensive than the earlier studies that looked at at heavier uh, vehicles, more expensive vehicles. It required two staff members to operate, for example. And so I think we need to be really careful about uh, closing, uh, for closing on, on opportunities here. And I, I wish we could include uh, some funding uh, as constrained for development of uh, rail transit planning, um, consistent with all of the studies, all of the studies that we've done and, and public uh, sentiment toward uh, transit on this corridor. And there's no question but that rail transit is the right transit alternative for the corridor. It's just, it's a, it's a question of what size should that be and what kinds of funding opportunities exist. And I think an earlier rejection of a public-private partnership is, is similarly premature. Many excellent transit, public transit programs and transportation investments generally are uh, nationally are, are public-private partnerships of some sort. So I hope uh, we can um, preload our regional transportation plans with anticipation of some kind of rail transit on that corridor because we don't have time to, to defund it or second guess it. Let's, let's move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Next up, Lonnie Faulkner. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, Equity Transit agrees with Mike Rotman's proposal to please revisit this plan prioritizing rail transit. We're concerned that the 2045 RTP does not reflect public views of our transportation future, nor does the 2045 RTP reflect our decades plus efforts and funding, which led us to the approval of the TCAA study, indicating that clean passenger rail is our next transit priority, which meets equity and environmental requirements not met through further highway widening proposed in the 2045 RTP. Similar to our progress with rail, future highway funding is not currently funded. Funding for highway widening would need to be acquired through grants, bonds, and other sources not yet identified. There are proven creative financing options to bring rail to our community that do not necessitate requiring a sales tax increase and have been done in cities like Portland. Public-private partnerships, as Barry Scott just mentioned, um, were also mentioned at the Global Glasgow Summit as an excellent way to move forward with uh, creative financing for such products, projects. The resounding defeat of the 2022 Measure D Greenway Initiative indicates a clear mandate to continue to integrate and emphasize rail and trail planning and projects along the Santa Cruz Coast Rail Line. The statement of overriding considerations is deeply concerning as the list of 44 serious and drastic unmitigated environmental impacts, including the plan's inability to meet long-term state greenhouse gas reduction targets and significant and unavoidable increases in daily vehicle miles travel per capita should sound a very loud alarm for the RTC and for our community. EIR Alternative 3 infill and transit was determined to be the environmentally superior alternative that was rejected primarily because AMBAG does not have the land use authority and cannot require local agencies to make major changes to the general plan. We need to do everything we can do quickly to mitigate climate change by prioritizing Thank all you, Thank you. Next up, Michael Saint. Uh, thank you, <clears throat> Chair Koning. Uh, I wasn't going to speak on this subject, but I, I really do want to second the opinions of Jack Nelson and also the last speaker that spoke. Um, I, I look at these metropolitan transportation plans or regional transportation plans, and if you take them in a general sense, basically, the, all they tend to do is try to mitigate and make excuses for widening highways and increasing greenhouse gas emissions and vehicle miles traveled. Uh, I went back to the 2005 Metropolitan Transportation Plan, uh, which was supposed to be through 2035. <clears throat> and we had approximately 80% was our mode transportation for cars. The rest was biking, walking, uh, metro, et cetera. 
Well, presently it's the same. I mean, nothing has happened since 2005. And it's just another bunch of uh, lots of hundreds and hundreds of pages of excuses for not doing the right thing. Um, very disappointing. Uh, I would not pass this. I know it's going to get a little bit more bigger issue in the next three to four years. But like the lot, one of the speakers said, we don't have time to wait. Uh, we need to get something going on both corridors, uh, whatever it is, uh, transfer money, <clears throat> look for funding. Get both quarters going. The rail trail was something small, like uh, Mr. Scott was saying, and then also go to the uh, dedicated bus on shoulder system on the highway. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Next up, Ben Vernassa. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to make a few comments uh, about what's going on in the Bay Area. The Bay Area has now a group of all the people in or the transportation commissions in that area to build and complete a 2,600 mile trail around the Bay Area. How about that? And they're gonna go and get some of that trail money that the state set aside. Now that's a, that's a lot of miles. That's between here and maybe to Chicago. The other thing that's really happened that's important is the Bay Bridge is adding a bicycle lane. They estimate, listen to this, they estimate that the traffic that will be eliminated, the car traffic and so forth eliminated will be equivalent to one lane. Now that's quite important. So I just want you to all keep this in mind that there's trail money out there now by the state and we need a trail, especially uh, in Mid-County, we need a trail. And also from Watsonville to the beaches, we need a trail. Now what you've done on the north side is build trails that are monsters, they're unsafe and so forth. Anyway, I wanted to bring you up to date on that because it's very important what they're doing in the Bay Area that we're not doing. So let's go get them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vanessa. All right, seeing no further members uh, of the public with their hands raised, I'll return it to the commission for action. Commissioner Rotkin. I'll move approval of the staff recommended resolution. And I do have comments, but I'll wait for a second. Is there a second? Second. McPherson? Second. All right, great. Uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Rotkin and a second by uh, Commissioner McPherson to uh, adopt the staff recommendation. And uh, yeah, Commissioner Rotkin, please. So I, I wanted to start by um, actually thanking and even praising Bud Colligan, one of the leaders of Greenway, for his uh, early uh, concession comments. Um, as a result of the, the, the way, way fewer than half of the votes were in, um, recognizing that there was a clear statement being made by the public. Unfortunately, not all of, and, and that's to say I, the leadership of, of Greenway, um, as far as I understand it. Um, but a lot of Greenway supporters have not got the message yet, and we've been hearing from some of them this morning, um, you know, which people want to suggest, though, you know, the vote meant this, people didn't know what they were doing, blah, blah, blah. I, I'm afraid that's not an adequate response. And I thought Mr. Colligan's response was much more um, uh, admirable um, in, in terms of, uh, you know, that there's something, people have said something and we do have an answer. And it's not a complete answer, but a much better answer than we did before about what people want us to do. I'm um, but I want to say that when people are saying, you know, the comments this morning that we're not taking action fast enough, climate change is a problem. I certainly share the view that we need to move as quickly as we can, but there's no way this agency, the Regional Transportation Commission, can sort of adopt a strategy for how we're gonna um, uh, use rail to address all kinds of issues, uh, short of knowing what the use of the land uses are gonna be uh, along the final uh, line, the way that it happens. But that takes a little bit of time for that to develop. We can't impose that on the county or the cities in our, in our county. And so I, that, was, that was why I made the comment earlier 
that it makes sense to wait, you know, to our next revision of this when we, some of those agencies might begin, when they think about the rail potential, begin to actually move on their housing projects. I want to point out, uh, and this is a response to the person, I think it was Ryan Saratano, who, who you know, points out that the study that we did, the TCAA, shows only 6,000 riders on the train and so forth. That's a result of the fact that in, when uh, Ronald Reagan was president, before Ronald Reagan was president, uh, when you did a proposal for a transportation planning of some kind, you were able to project the use of that project in terms of what it would look like after it was constructed, how many people would use it at that point. What the Reagan administration did was change the federal rules so that you can only, they won't give you any federal money if the planning you do uh, is based on projections of the ridership you would have when you complete the project. It has to be based on who would take it today uh, right now, if it just were plopped down on them or something, in terms of the, who's who's where's the existing housing uses and other uh, public uses, and that's how you get this number of only six thousand people are going to use it, and therefore it doesn't make any difference and it doesn't affect anything. But clearly, we need to begin, you know, at least thinking about this at the local level in terms of what the ultimate potential is for housing development and other kinds of public uses and so forth along this line when uh, when, it, when it actually transportation line when it actually gets constructed. And so that's why I think it's, I, I made the motion to approve this today, but I'm arguing that, you know, we don't, we don't, we're not going to be able to like uh, incorporate the impacts of rail, like, you know, snapping our fingers and telling our staff, you know, just do it, make it happen. It requires a lot of other agencies to take some actions for us to be able to do that in a legal and constructive way. So that I wanted to explain my, my motion this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rockin. Commissioner Hurst. Thank you very much, Chair. I, I too think we should move forward and we should move forward in the most positive way we can. And I'm glad we're looking at what other agencies are doing because transportation just doesn't stop at uh, the city limits or the county line. You know, it's it, we should have that all encompassing view and in, in whatever we can do. And so I'm glad to see, hear that there's an emphasis on partnerships and future planning you know, what we do today and what we did yesterday does affect the future. And, and it's time that we get moving and prepare for uh, a, a brave new world that, you know, we don't know how it's going to shape in many respects. But looking at what other agencies and partnering up with other agencies and trying to really meet the needs of the people, that's what we should be all about. And so thanks for helping us get moving. Thank you, Commissioner Hurst. Commissioner Schifrin. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm going to support the motion. Um, one reason is that if we don't have an approved RT uh, regional transportation plan, all our the funding for all our projects are threatened. Um, secondly, it, I don't. I never think of the RTP as being substantively all that important because, as the representative for AMBAG said, it can be changed at any time. It meets federal and state requirements, but Ultimately, if the commission wants to move forward on a project that isn't in the uh, plan, it can do so. It just needs to amend the plan. And we've done that in the past. I do think, um, you know, uh, listening to some of the public comments, any hope that hyperbole will be notched down <laughs> after the election is gone. Um, you know, I, I, I could take issue with a number of speakers who have uh, from my perspective, over-dramatize the reality. But I need, since I've worked on and the segment five uh, trail segment is in the uh, third district of the county, uh, the comments that that segment is going to destroy agricultural land uh, <laughs> on the North Coast uh, it needs to be responded to. Uh, it's uh, taking hyperbole to the to the max, um, the impact on agricultural land is extremely minor, and it will not affect the viability of the land that um, is used for farming on the north coast. Um, so, I do think though that the commission is going to have to do things a little differently as a result of um, of the of the election. From my perspective, substantively, the election really wasn't about anything. Politically, it was about sending a message. And the message was, does the commission want, uh, do, does the public want to remove the tracks from the rail line to build the trail or not? 
And I think we've heard very clearly that the public does not want to remove the tracks. Well, I think the commission needs to listen to that. It's consistent with the, what the commission has done over the decades. It's consistent with the commission's decision on the TCAA. It's, the, it's on the Unified Corridor Study. Those um, all supported using the corridor for public transit. And I think the voters have given a resounding support for that direction. There are a couple of consequences that are not really on, a, on our agenda today, but I think we're gonna need to talk about them. And I think that has to do with uh, mid-county segments and whether it really makes sense to consider an interim, what's being called an interim trail as feasible um, given this vote. Is the commission really going to seriously consider an adverse abandonment on the line um, and after this vote? If it's not, and I think there's a very strong case that the interim um, trail option is not feasible and should be dropped from the EIR uh, as an infeasible option. I think at least we should consider that. I also have been concerned about the misuse of the term, from my perspective, ultimate trail. It's not the ultimate trail. It's the preferred option in our rail trail plan that was adopted unanimously by this commission and um, was approved by the various um, by the various um, um, local uh, the various cities. So, from my perspective, we need to continue to do what we have been doing in moving forward with the trail. Um, and I think the the public, um, I, as I see the vote, the public strongly supports having that trail move forward. Um, at the same time, I think we need to be more uh, vigorous in our support for the potential of rail. And I think that's not before us today, but certain uh, community members had said, well, maybe we really need to do the, um, the, uh, the business plan. I don't know whether that would be helpful or not, but I think the, the results of Measure D does justify a discussion on what more the commission can be doing to try to move funding for um, a public transit rail alternative forward. So um, I, I, I would urge that that come back on our agenda sometime in the not too distant future so we can really have a, a chance to, uh, to talk about and focus on uh, whether the commission is gonna be willing to do anything different than it's done before. And if so, what? Because I think we've received a very loud message and I hope the commission is gonna be willing to hear it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Schiffen. Commissioner Hernandez. Yeah, you know, I just, you know, I agree with a lot of the comments. Um, you know, I want to see too if uh, we can look at the business plan with light rail, if indeed we didn't look at that option and, you know, get it back on track and, you know, move forward with this plan, the RTP as well. Um, Later on, maybe see if we can add an addendum or revise the future plan. But yeah, I agree with this. Uh, we'll move forward with this plan. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bertrand. Uh, thank you very much, Co Chair Conning. Um, I'm actually not too sure which way forward the community has told us to go. But I am sure one thing is that. This community is divided on how to implement a vision that we um, substantiated a long time ago when we bought the corridor. And I know my concept of the vision has changed. Um, I remember Dennis Norton was our representative from the city council of Capitola, and uh, he asked me to um, make a statement, and I did. I made a statement before the Board of Supervisors in support of this at that time. I had a different vision, which I won't go over in terms of what I said. But I've been cognizant of the fact that the more I learned about what is being anticipated in terms of making the vision a reality has tempered how I've approached things. So visions can be appro um, approached from a variety of perspectives. Some people approach it from, you know, they've had a lot of experience in this world of trying to accomplish things. Um, my background tends to 
think of things in terms of hard casting of elemental things that make things possible. That's funding, that's infrastructure, that's a whole variety of issues, whether they're environmental, equity issues, um, the reality being able to get the public to support it. Or people have a vision, especially when I was younger, is very aspirational. You know, you are motivated by things that need to be corrected. You are motivated by things that need to be addressed because the world is not right, because we're not doing our part in addressing those things. And these things are very real considerations. What I just mentioned are very real considerations for the younger community and those to see a future, perhaps for themselves and perhaps for their kids. Visions need to be a compromise. Visions need to be approached from both angles so that the reality for our community and for the people that we represent can be realized. The other aspect that I think about a lot right now, and our world is in transition, it's, it's an, an inflection point. Um, we're, we're sort of at the top, we're approaching the top of the hill, we don't know what the possibilities of the future are going to entail, what, what they're going to offer us. And you know, I think people, Mike has even mentioned, and I mentioned this before, we don't know what technology is going to give us to solve our problems. And I will support this, what's on the agenda right now, we're gonna vote on pretty soon. I don't think we're ready to take into account all the things that we will be able to bring to bear to solve our current problems but we are in the development of those things. And the next plan, I think, will hopefully bring some of those things in. One thing I would like to ask our council, our commission to do is to be more involved with AMBAG. I think that if we're going to have our, our part in making these changes, this is my last point, we should be more involved over the next four years. I, I appreciate Heather, I appreciate her, her staff, you know, it, it is an effort that it's extreme and it's very hard to put together. And it's been mentioned that this is something that's required of us. But I think maybe it's also required of us as a local agency involved in transportation to be more involved in this. Yes, we're focused on transportation. We have that part. We're not in housing. We're not in other things that are addressed in the plan. But I think in terms of, I just put forward to the commission that in terms of our responsibility, Maybe we should be more responsible by being involved ahead of time. And so those are my three comments, and I am in support of the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bertrand. Commissioner Brown. Uh, thank you, Chair Koenig. I, um, I just wanted to make a, a quick comment here. I had some comments that I was planning to make, um, but I, I think I'm going to just leave leave those aside we don't need to hear another uh round of uh, speech on <laughs> what the um the way forward i think that you know the results of measure d speak for themselves in my mind um and i i just want to say that i do support uh moving forward along the lines that i've heard several commissioners uh raise today commissioner rotkin and commissioner schifrin i think followed up on that um, I do think that we have a responsibility to be responsive to the public and um, to to move forward in a way that um, takes those you know that clear message into account. Um, and I do think that uh, the the um, action we're taking today, while I um, am I, I do not support highway widening, and you know, I, I've I've hung in there. I've I've supported moving forward with the overall planning process through uh, the regional transportation plan. I'll I'll do so again today. Um, but I I also believe that you know when we're looking at the the whole picture, um, as I think the RTP ought to reflect, and it, it doesn't currently, and and I think I hope it will in the future. Um, I recognize the urgency, as Jack Nelson and others have said. Um, but I want us to think about the, um, the the difference in the conversation about the highway versus the rail corridor. And we always seem to be, you know, it just strikes me that we always seem to be in 
um, talking in austerity mode when it comes to the rail corridor. And I think we all, and myself included, have sort of internalized that and kind of accept it. We never speak that way when it comes to the highway, which is a sig extremely expensive uh, project which I believe is not in our interest uh, due to the climate realities and for, for many, many reasons, induced demand being the big one, a big one. Um, but I think we ought to start thinking about like getting out of that mindset of austerity mode when it comes to thinking about our, uh, our rail corridor. And so I, I just wanted to say that today. Um, I hope others are ready to have that conversation and I look forward to having that conversation uh, in the coming months. So I'll, I'll leave it there. And uh, thanks everyone for um, all of your work to uh, keep us moving forward. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Commissioner Quinn. Oh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'll be supporting it also. And I'm greatly reassured by uh, Director Preston's comments about the flexibility it allows us to uh, moving forward. Second thing I'll say is, and probably response to the many, many emails I've received about Measure D, uh, I think obviously we need to be aware of it and recognize it and acknowledge it. I also want to uh, thank uh, Mr. Preston and the team for their continued diligence in taking, you know, our beliefs and our aspirations and matching them with the reality, uh, the scientific facts, the engineering facts, and the barriers ahead. And I think that will be an increasingly important role for the RTC going forward is matching you know, what we're hearing are the are the beliefs and the wishes of the public with with the realities that are out there, the fiscal constraints, the, the pros and cons of everything. And I look forward to weighing the pros and cons very deliberately in a data-driven way going forward. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Any other comments by members of the commission? Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would just like to uh, compliment uh, Mike Rodkin uh, for his comments maybe a couple of months ago when uh, lots and lots of people went side, wanted to go sideways on the commitment of what Measure D stood for and where the pots of money were going to go. And when people said, we don't want widening of the highway, we don't want any money going into asphalt, he reminded them that that was part of the bargain. So anybody who wants to kind of renege on the tenets of Measure D, uh, do so at your own risk because that was what the people voted for. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Any further uh, comments? I'll just add a couple of comments. First off, uh, I thoroughly agree with Commissioner McPherson, that the uh, three words most important are transit-oriented development. And I want to remind everyone that the county is in the process of a sustainability update, which really lays the groundwork for that, particularly in the urban area of the unincorporated county. Uh, and it, it will help us in our in the coming year uh, to update our housing element with the you know, over 4,000 units being asked of us uh, through the RENA process by the state. I'm completely committed to ensuring we get the most out of uh, our urban infill projects and transit oriented development. Uh, and that's why I've worked with Commissioner McPherson uh, to bring forward additional uh, recommendations to improve our transportation demand management programs uh, and encourage that kind of development within the county. Since we are, uh, many others have spoken about Measure D, I'll make a few comments now about that as well. It's clear Measure D lost by a large margin and that voters did not want to change the county general plan. I think it's important to recognize that the rejection of Greenway's proposed solution does not mean that our problems are solved. This no vote doesn't make the corridor wider, doesn't fix any of our trestles, and it does not deliver money needed to build and operate a train. My goal has always been to help our community solve problems, not to create them. And so if this commission wants to explore solutions using the relatively small amount of tax money set aside for maintaining the corridor, let's do it. I am happy to consider a passenger rail EIR or bonding to complete as much maintenance on the rail corridor as possible or finding ways to conduct a passenger rail test. When it comes to applying for state money, we have submitted grant applications for roughly $100 million to build the next segments of the trail and keep the tracks. We'll see how we do. We'll see if we can afford it. With the extreme negativity that has surrounded this issue, I don't think that we are in a position to get to yes on any solution 
at the moment. I believe a new tax measure to fund a train would have failed just as badly in this past election. And uh, the way the city's sales tax is trending would suggest as much. My hope is that with this measure done, we can leave the negativity behind us and that we can take a more collaborative approach as we encounter problems, that we can help each other over them rather than blame each other for them, and that we can take a scientific view and look for ways to prove ourselves wrong rather than selectively seeing the things that prove us right. That's the attitude that I'm going to bring to the table and I hope my colleagues will too. With that we have a, um, yes, Commissioner Schiffrin, there's something else you want to add? Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on your comments because I really appreciate them. <clears throat> I think it's really important that we move forward in a, in a collaborative way here. I mean, there was a very strong message from the public, but in the end, I think people really share very similar goals in terms of wanting uh, a trail that really serves the public. And I think people want transit that really serves the public. It's true. We don't know how to get there from here and it's going to be <laughs> difficult, but I think if we work together and try to look for solutions that extend the trail, try to move forward with identifying funding for um, the and potential feasibility of uh, public transit on the corridor, uh, I am really hoping that we will get past the negativity and we'll be able to work collaboratively on solutions that are in line with what the commission's been trying to do over the last decade. So thank you for your comments. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we have a motion by Commissioner Rock and a second by Commissioner McPherson. Uh, clerk, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Bertrand. I agree. Commissioner Sandy Brown. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commission Alternate Hurst. Aye. Commission Alternate Hernandez. Yes. Commission Alternate Schifrin. Aye. Commission Alternate Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Koenig. Aye. Commissioner McPherson. Yeah. Commissioner Kristen Brown. I think she might have left us. Commissioner uh, Parker. Yes. And Commissioner Rotkin. Aye. That passes unanimously. Well, with uh, Commissioner Kristen Brown not voting. Sorry about that. Thank you. Then uh, the commission has adopted the 2045 Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Plan. Uh, we'll now proceed back to the top of our agenda to item three, uh, the rest of the consent agenda. So that's items three through 22. Are there any questions or comments from commissioners on the consent agenda? I move the consent agenda. Oh, wait for the public to. Public. All right, sorry. All right, we Thanks, have Mike. Sure, well, is there any member of the public that wishes to comment on items on the consent agenda? Michael Saint. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Chair Koenig. Um, just to make a few comments, uh, consent agenda item six, under projects and planning, um, I would like to thank the RTC, Director Preston and staff for their persistence and work in continuing the original goal of building the Monterey Bay Scenic Sanctuary Trail next to the tracks. The MBSST has always been the best plan and should continue to be the plan going forward. We look forward to the start of construction of uh, this segment 7B later this summer. Uh, continuing in the same thoughts, uh, we wholeheartedly support the RTC once again and Director Preston on item uh, number 21A, B, and C. These letters sent to the Caltrans Grant Application Committee are vital in continuing construction of segment eight and nine safe routes to downtown Watsonville and segments 10 and 11 of the Monterey Bay Sanctuary, uh, Scenic Sanctuary Trail. In my humble opinion, this will deliver us a trail sooner than other alternatives and save taxpayers millions of dollars by focusing on one trail project. And that's the Monterey Bay Scenic Sanctuary Trail Network next to the tracks. Thank all of you for your hard work and staying focused on this plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stain. Brian Peoples. 
I asked Brian from Trail now. I'll comment on item six. Um, so this is a good example of where we're spending a lot of our resources to accommodate a train that really isn't going to make uh, be, ever come. And what that does is it pulls away valuable resources from other needed areas like Metro, like building the trail. We've only built 1.2 miles of trail in uh, over a decade, um, spending on average $10 million a mile. This segment, this segment's not even a mile and it's already over budget by $10 million. Uh, we did not support continuing to move forward with, uh, with this segment because you're destroying trees. You're, you're violating the 2045 transportation plan, the EIR, by imposing additional destruction of the, of the corridor just to accommodate a train that will truly never come. What, we're, what I would suggest people start to do is go out to a project of a, a, a rail system. I was just in Seattle. They're building this huge rail system it truly isn't realistic for our community. And uh, what really is realistic is opening the coastal corridor now mm -hmm. as a trail, as a transportation resource. So I just wanted to highlight again, the burden uh, that is being placed on our community by keeping the coastal corridor closed for decades and decades more if we continue to think that we're gonna keep a train there. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Peoples. Rena McFarland. Hi, thank you. And I'm never quite sure where it's okay to comment on particular things, but this is um, after the binary nature of Measure D initiative and the narrative distortion and the negativity. <laughs> So Bloomberg, so National Media City Lab article on June. If you could just, we are, we're just, there will be an opportunity for general public comment. Okay, okay, sorry. Direct items to uh, on, items on our consent agenda at the moment. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, um, seeing no other members of the public that wish to speak, motion sure. for action on the consent agenda. Second Jock's motion, which he's about to make, I think. Okay. We have a motion by uh, Commissioner Bruce and a second by Commissioner Rock. I'll take that thumbs up as a reaffirmation of the motion. Any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Bertrand? I agree. Commissioner Sandy Brown? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Alternate Hurst? Aye. Commission Alternate Hernandez? Yes. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Commission Alternate Quinn? Yes. Commissioner Koenig? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Parker? Yeah, that's what yes. we did with uh, the campaign. I bought all the middle states. Would you please mute? Mine was the higher pitched voice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Parker. Commissioner Watkin? Aye. And Commissioner Alternate Schifrin? I already said aye. Oh, sorry about that. Didn't hear you. Commissioner. That was unanimous. All right. Thank you. The consent agenda being, being passed. Proceed to item 23, Commissioner Reports. Any member of the Commission wish to share a report? Seeing none. Oh, oh sorry, Commissioner Rodkin. Just quickly, I, I have a column, uh, I think it'll be in today's uh, lookout, what we call that a magazine or whatever these online publications are called, um, suggesting next steps for the RTC. Um, I'm not sure everybody will agree with me, that's for sure, but it, just to let people know that I, you know, at least I'm sure I'm not the only one on the commission thinking about what our next steps need to be given the, what's happened with the election, but I'm not going to take time to go over that now. People are welcome to read that and get some idea of where I'm at least trying to go. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rodkin. Seeing no uh, other commissioners, we'll proceed to item 24, the director's report. Mr. Preston. Thank you, Chair Koenig. Um, I'm going to start with a quick announcement. Um, since our next regularly scheduled RTC meeting is not until August 4th, 
RTC will be having a special RTC meeting on Thursday, July 21st at 9 a.m. The purpose of the meeting will be to make AB 361 findings within 30 days of the August 4th meeting um, as required for the RTC to be able to continue to meet either virtually or in hybrid format. So commissioners should mark their calendars for um, July 21st and let their alternates know if you cannot attend. Um, our August meeting, we're considering um, having a hybrid meeting um, and having it in, in the Board of Supervisor Chambers um, and also making it available uh, virtually. It is a lot more work for staff. So if uh, commissioners have comments on the desire to have that format, um, uh, you can make those comments after I complete my report. Um, the Association for Com Commuter Transportation brings together traffic demand management professionals from across the United States, Canada, and other countries. This year's conference will be in Chicago beginning on July 31st. Um, Amanda Marino, who has been working on RTC's Cruise 511 program, will be attending the conference. Over the course of four days, the conference will include many informative and educational sessions on the state of the practice for traffic demand management programs. The conference will kick off with a session on diversity, equity, and inclusion. There will also be sessions on effectively communi effective community engagement with purpose, healthy streets through Vision Zero, the future of telework, mobility strategic planning, improving transit, shuttle, and van pool ridership. Um, I also want to call your attention to a couple items that were approved as part of today's consent agenda. Um, the first uh, consent item number nine, the RTC will serve as the local access fund administrator for the transportation networks companies or TNC access for all program. And this is to improve the accessibility of transportation for persons with disabilities in Santa Cruz County. Uh, TNCs, those are the Ubers and the Lyfts of the world. They collect the 10% access fee as required by the CPUC. And RTC will now administer a program which will use that fee to provide an option for individuals um, in wheelchairs to call on a wheelchair accessible vehicle on demand. Uh, RTC uh, still needs to be accepted by the state as the administrator, and it will take some time to get this program up and running. Uh, staff will provide more information as the program is developed. Amanda Moreno will be staffing this new program. Um, <clears throat> also with item 18, the commission approved the 2016 Measure D annual report for fiscal year 21. The Measure D Taxpayer Oversight Committee or TOC worked very hard to help produce the fiscal year uh, annual report, which highlights the progress we have made um, in the delivery of the Measure D expenditure plan. And these are volunteers of, of our community. Uh, highlights include the funding grants received due to the leveraging power of having a local revenue source. So thank you to the voters for passing 2016 Measure D, the TOC for volunteering their time to produce this report and staff for their hard work and dedication in delivering the Measure D expenditure plan. Um, I also want to mention that staff continues to monitor the federal and state budget process and work with legislators to ensure Santa Cruz County continues to have funding opportunities for its projects. On the federal level, RTC received notice from Congressmember Anna Eshoo that she has requested $2.5 million for the Boulder Creek Complete Streets Improvement Project, a letter to Chair Brown from Representative Anna Eshoo regarding the Boulder Creek project funding request is included in today's packet on page 21-1. I'm pleased to also announce that Senator Alex Padilla has requested that the fiscal year 23 federal budget includes $6.8 million for the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail, Coastal Rail Trail, and $3.5 million for preliminary engineering for the Scotts Creek Highway 1 Coastal Resiliency Project. The Senator's list also proposes funding for the Santa Cruz Metro Pacific Station Transit Oriented Development of $4.9 million, a Metro Paracruz Facility of $5.5 million, and six new electric vehicles at about $229,000. 
While it is likely to be several months of negotiations before the federal appropriations bill is finalized, and it is common for most congressionally directed spending requests to not make it into the final budget, as it happened last year, we are very appreciative that Senator Padilla and Congress uh, person Eshu have continued to identify these as priority projects and staff will continue to push for a final budget that includes funding for these important transportation projects. On the state side, the California legislature met its June 15th constitutional deadline for passing a balanced state budget. The bill only represents an agreement between the two houses of the legislature and further negotiations between the legislative leaders and Governor Gavin Newsom are expected before a final version of the state budget is approved and signed into law. While the next fiscal year starts on July 1st, the budget process will likely extend well beyond that date as lawmakers regularly pass follow-up measures amending provisions of their spending plan to reflect compromises with the governor throughout the summer. Both the governor and the legislature have proposed significant increases in funding for transportation infrastructure, including funding for transit, freight, ports, active transportation, climate adaptation, and other purposes. I have an announcement on a Highway 1 project advertisement. On June 6, Caltrans advertised the Highway 1 41st Avenue to Soquel Drive Auxiliary Lane and Bus on Shoulder Project for construction bids. The project will construct auxiliary lanes and a bus on shoulder facility in both directions of Highway 1 between the 41st Avenue and Soquel Drive interchanges in the city of Capitola and Live Oak. Uh, an incorporated section of the, the county. The project also includes construction of a new bicycle and pedestrian overcrossing at Chanticleer Avenue. The project is funded by Measure D, State Transportation Improvement Program, Federal Highway Improvement Program, and Senate Bill 1 Solutions to Congested Corridor Funds with an engineer's estimate of $26 million. The bid opening is scheduled for late July. Construction is anticipated to begin later this year and take approximately two years to complete. Um, RTC is very pleased to welcome Matthew Schroeder as the newest member of the RTC team. Matt began working on Monday as a transportation planner one and has a bachelor's of arts degree in environmental studies with an emphasis in politics, policy and justice from Seattle University. Matt also completed a master's of urban planning degree at San Jose State University. Matt worked for over three years on the Safe Routes to School program for the City of Cupertino Public Works Department with the Traffic Engineering Division. There he worked on increasing travel to and from school by bike, walking, and transit, executed public outreach, and assisted in the implementation of Cupertino's bicycle and pedestrian transportation plans. Matt also assisted on the design, launch, and implementation of an on-demand microtransit shuttle service at the Mineta, Mineta Transportation Institute, Matt worked as a research assistant on a Caltrans contract to define transit equity and evaluate transit equity metrics. Matt also worked at the City of San Jose Department of Transportation Planning Division as a graduate intern, where he assisted with planning, design, data collection, analysis, and public outreach for various bike travel improvement projects and for micro mobility implementation. Matt is a member of the American Planning Association. Matt is already working with the website update team to implement GIS visualization tools and strategies for the information that is available to the public on RTC's um, projects and programs. He will also be working with senior planner Rachel Morconi on the Santa Cruz County Transportation Equity Action Plan funded with a recently secured Sustainable Communities grant from Caltrans. So welcome, Matthew. And um, with that, I conclude my director's report. Thank you, Director Preston. Are there any questions from members of the commission? Commissioner Schifrin. Yes, I wanted to respond to the uh, executive director's request for feedback on having hybrid meetings. Um, while it's definitely will be an inconvenience to have to leave the comfort of my home to go to uh, commission meetings. I think it's important for the public, members of the public who can make it to a commission meeting and who want to make it and actually speak to uh, 
people in person uh, to have that opportunity. So I know that only five commissioners can be at the hybrid meeting at the Board of Supervisors chambers because of <clears throat> the limited size. But I think, you know, it's very understandable that commissioners from South County and other areas of the county where it's a hassle to get into the city will continue to do it virtually. I certainly support that. But I think to the extent that we can start moving back to the normalization of uh, public participation, I think that's a good thing. And so I do support <clears throat> starting to have hybrid meetings uh, at our next meeting. In August, I, I will not be available for the July 21st meeting. Thank you, Commissioner Schiffer. Commissioner Rockton. I just wanted to ask uh, Director Guy Preston, if, if you have anything to tell us about what's happening with possibility of bonding uh, money from uh, Measure D, uh, which will allow us to bring you know money forward from the next 25 years of income to the present to be able to speed up a bunch of a variety of projects. Uh, obviously, interest rates are going up, and we're kind of losing the amazing gap that we had before. But what are we doing anything on this, and what where, where are we at in that process, if anywhere? Well, if you remember from the bond presentation, we need to show a reasonable expectation that the commission could expend the funds within three years of bonding. So um, the projects that we considered bonding on are all projects that we are have or are planning on submitting grant applications for. So we have to wait until we receive notification as to whether or not those projects will have the additional matching funds from the, the state um, um, and possibly the federal government on, on one of our applications to be able to um, then bond and actually have the project go forward to construction. So we're still a little ways out, but we're very focused on it. We know interest rates are rising. Um, it's one of the uh, the unnecessary, the, the necessary things that need to go on right now to control inflation, hopefully that'll start to um, uh, show its effects and, and result in prices stabilizing and going down. So there may be some benefits. And I know from bonding in the past, um, where we ended up with interest rates, you know, in the 4% range, um, we were able to refinance that when interest rates did go back down. Um, so it is you know, a game that we all play, we're not going to miss the boat completely, and we may have some higher costs and interest rates, but um, we will still have opportunities to advance projects and, and avoid the escalating costs and um, bring projects forward um, sooner so people can start benefiting from those projects as soon as possible. Thanks. That's very responsive to my question. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rodkin. Other questions or comments? I'll just add that I, I concur with uh, Commissioner Schiffer and I would love to see a hybrid meeting in August. I recognize that it is a bit of additional work to set up, uh, but I think ultimately it will uh, help make our meetings more accessible to all members of the public as, as well as uh, help the commission work together. I've been holding hybrid town hall meetings since the beginning of the year and I'm consistently uh, impressed by the number of people that show up uh, both in person and continue to show up online. So it's uh, really been uh, a positive thing as far as meeting, making meetings more accessible. Commissioner Parker? Uh, just my two cents. I agree with uh, your comments and uh, Commissioner uh, Schifrin's comments as well. Um, being from South County, uh, that it seems as long as we can still participate virtually, that, uh, that uh, representation can still happen in a timely fashion. Uh, and uh, and it's much appreciated that hybrid is um, an option, and we do appreciate staff having to go the extra mile or multiple miles uh, to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Parker. All right, seeing no further questions or comments, was there any member of the public that wishes to comment on the director's report? Seeing none, we'll proceed to, uh, thank you, Director Preston, proceed to item 25, the Caltrans report. Good morning, uh, Chair and Commissioners. My name is Brandi Ryder, and I'm the um, Office Chief for Transportation Planning here in Caltrans District 5. Uh, I don't have a lot of announcements today, but I did want to make one uh, announcement related to 
a recent notice of funding opportunity. Uh, the USDOT has opened applications for the first round of funding for the um, bridge investment program. This program will provide 12.5 billion over five years with nearly 2.4 billion available in this um, uh, fiscal year 2022. And so the purpose of the, the dollars is to plan, replace, rehabilitate and protect and preserve the nation's largest bridges. Uh, the planning applications, there's two different uh, grants available. One are planning uh, grant, planning process, uh, feasibility and revenue forecasting. And then there's also uh, construction grants for large construction projects. Those planning applications are to be submitted by July 25th of 2022. And then the bridge uh, construction projects are September 8th of 2022. Mm -hmm. The notice of funding opportunity is out and available. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to follow up with me. I'm sure that uh, the RTC is well aware of the NOFA being out and available. And then um, one last update, just kind of a highlight. Uh, as we recently are kicking off our sustainable community grants, the next round uh, of transportation planning grants is getting ready to kick off. We have some materials that will be coming out for review. Uh, both public review and we'll be coordinating with um, the RTC staff so they have an opportunity and then we'll be kicking those uh, that ground cycle off at the end of the fall and that's all I have for today if you have any questions I'm happy to answer. Thank you Ms. Ryder. Are there questions from members of the commission? Seeing none, any member of the public that wishes to comment on the Caltrans report? Seeing none, uh, oh I'm sorry we have a uh, Hand raised by Fort Zoom host. Go ahead. Hi, Commission. I apologize for the wrong name there. This is Baina Siegel. I um, am wondering uh, if the Commission could maybe comment on which bridges we could possibly uh, apply for funding for. Um, I realize this is a Big question, um, but maybe we could follow up in an email to me or Fort. That would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Sayo. Maybe, we could, maybe we could just ask staff to respond to that request in, in, in a you know, reasonably timely fashion. Yeah, because I, I have no, I have no idea what they might be. Yeah, we. I, I didn't mean now necessarily. I didn't take, I okay. didn't take time. But just so you know, we're aware of the no phone. We were actually looking into it. Um, sure. It just came out. Yeah. I, I didn't mean at this meeting, just at some point, give them a response by looking into it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Director Preston. All right. Um, seeing no further comments, uh, thank you, Ms. Ryder, for the report from Caltrans. We'll now proceed uh, to item 28, oral communications. It's an opportunity for member of the public to address the commission on items within the jurisdiction of the commission that's not on the agenda um, and for members who have not already spoken this morning uh, during that general comment period. We'll find that woman who's been trying twice to get on in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, I think um, Ms. McFarland, if you're still present and want to make a comment. Yeah, go ahead, Karina. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, going back to the Bloomberg City Lab article, the title of it was Train Fanatics, in quotes, score a win in California battle over idle tracks. Then it goes on to say the outcome represents a win for rail advocates who dream of restoring passenger service to Santa Cruz, like we ever had passenger service on the branch line. It goes on to say, but it's, it also highlights the tortuous process of building transportation infrastructure in California and the differing visions for sustainable growth, which made me think of Supervisor Ellen Pyrie, lead representative to the RTC through the purchase of the rail corridor, who said that the branch line had never been viable for passenger rail, but that's a fight for another day. And it always stuck with me that why does it have to be a fight? You step in and you find yourself in a fight. And we have so many leading edge initiatives in Santa Cruz County from all the conflict resolution initiatives to restorative justice, neighborhood accountability board for first time offenders, all of that. 
we really want participatory democracy models that support citizens to stand shoulder to shoulder, looking back at these huge problems that we have together and emerging with clarity in keeping with whole systems dynamics. So that's what I wanted to say that we're in the 21st century and we'd really like to see some more participatory democracy models in the county that allow us to stand shoulder to shoulder. Probably the biggest thing through the campaign was people that I talked to that just said, I'm so confused and that I'm really shocked by the negativity of the campaign. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McFarland. Any other members of the public that wish to address us? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll move to item 29, review of items to be discussed in closed session. Uh, thank you, Chair Koenig. We do have um, a closed session today regarding labor negotiations for the mid-management unit and the uh, core group. And uh, I would just give um, Ms. Parra and, and, and Executive Director the opportunity to note their abstentions for the record and the portions they'll be abstaining from. Okay, and will there be any reportable actions? Uh, we do not anticipate a reportable action today, Chair. And, and were we sent a link for the closed session this morning? Yes, it came One from, was, uh, it came from uh, CTV webinars. Okay, let's find that. And uh, mine came in yesterday. All right, and um, we'll take public comment on items that are in the closed session agenda. Ms. Corwin. Thank you, commissioners. Um, I am Krista Corwin. I am your admin assistant, uh, but today I'm speaking as a member of the public. Uh, let's have a little bit of fun. Show of hands, who gets too many emails? on RTC topics. Okay, I'll take that as a rhetorical question. Um, so go to, your, go to your agenda packet, go to page 306. This is your correspondence log. And I want you to look in the upper right-hand corner, there's red text that says link to full comments. Click that. That is every email that comes into the RTC that might pertain to, to you. This is members of the public who want to speak to you directly. Um, so I wanted to draw your attention to this because this is something uh, new that the admin team has wanted to bring to you. We hear you that you get way too many emails. You can't respond to all of them. I get it. We want to make your job as easy as possible. Members of the public that are still on this call, I, I hope that you're paying attention to this too. And I want you to know there's actually no reason to CC every commissioner on your emails to the RTC commission. If you email info at sccrtc.org and you're trying to get the attention of your commissioners, it will go on this document and it will be available one week when we post, when we post the agenda packet, it's available to the commissioners. Commissioners, go ahead and take a look at that document when you're, you know, on your own time, um, when you're ready for that. So, um, if you in, if you liked what I if you like what we're doing on staff, um, and you appreciate the work that your core members, uh, core folks are doing, um, then please uh, consider a yes vote on today's proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Corbin. All right, seeing no uh, other members of the public with their hand raised, uh, Director Preston, is there something you want to add? Yeah, at the request of legal counsel, I was, um, uh, I'm letting the commission and the public know that I will be abstaining in closed session for items relating to um, cost of living adjustments and, and anything that could affect my compensation as well. And uh, 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 Yesenia Parra, uh, will also be abstaining from the discussions um, for um, the association of um, uh, the RTC middle management association um, uh, as she is a member. All right, thank you. And Mr. Riley Gerbrandt, is there a comment you wanted to make? There is, yeah. Um, I would like to, um, I'm the associate transportation engineer with 
the uh, RTC. And I know you just um, mentioned, um, Chair Koenig, that uh, you were closing the um, public comments. So I just wanted to make sure that it'll be okay for me to, um, on my own time, make a comment to uh, the commission. Sure, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, like I mentioned, I'm coming to you uh, on my own time. I am a associate transportation engineer here at the RTC. And um, I also have been uh, coordinating with the, the core members um, in the negotiations um, for the labor negotiations, which is the item on the closed session. Um, we just wanted to highlight to, to you guys at the, the commission, um, uh, as, the, as the commissioners, um, respectfully, the, the great work that the RTC staff um, and the core group have um, been providing. And I know it comes up time and time again um, through public comment and also comment from um, uh, commissioners um, applauding and uh, thanking staff for the ex excellent work that they do. Um, I joined the, the staff a little over six months ago and have been really blown away at the, the caliber of staff here at the RTC, how wonderful um, they work and how wonderful we work uh, providing services for Santa Cruz County um, and doing transportation planning services as well as um, work um, on the rail line itself. Um, and I just wanted to like applaud, applaud the staff um, and say that we are doing a really good job and um, serving the community really well. And we ask that um, the commission look upon the um, proposal from uh, the core members. And um, as you're considering that, remember uh, the high caliber staff you do have and that we would, um, uh, we want to, to enable the RTC to continue to attract really high caliber staff. Um, and these negotiations are, are part of that. So thank you very much for hearing my, top, my, uh, my message uh, on behalf of the core staff. Thank you, Mr. Gabran. All right, we do not anticipate any reportable action out of closed session. So that brings us to the end of our open session agenda. The next RTC meeting is scheduled for Thursday, August 4th, 2022 at 9 a.m. Actually, we have a meeting uh, to, to recertify oh. our ability to meet in private or something. I forget so, the date. Right. But... It's July 21st. Uh, it will be a, a it's not single... private, but it's already online. A single item special meeting. Uh, and the next full regular meeting would be uh, Thursday, August 4th. Uh, the, we'll now re uh, take a five minute break and reconvene closed session at 1117. Thank you. Good job at sharing. Thank you. Thank you.